Well, Elizabeth is actually a twin and everything was going great until about, oh, 23 weeks. And everything was going great then even. I went to the doctor just to check because the twins were measuring a little differently. And so we went in and everything was fine. And then all of a sudden they were like, oh, um, let me go get the doctor. So when the doctor came in, he said, you, we're gonna rush you over right now to the hospital and you will probably be having these babies quickly, but let's hope you can keep them in at least 48 hours. Turns out I had an incompetent cervix and they, you wouldn't have known about that until you were pregnant and this was my first pregnancy. And then the twins just made it worse. And so by that point I was already four centimeters dilated and my, the sac was protruding. So they couldn't do anything about it. We just had to rush over to the hospital, start a magnesium drip and steroid shots and just hope they stayed in as long as possible. Uh, so I kept them in for a week, and it was a week to the day that I went in the hospital that they um, they came. So we had to do an emergency C-section, and uh, and both of them were, you know, very premature. Obviously, they were 24 weeks when they came, and um, both of them had brain bleeds. Both of them had lung problems. Um, it was very scary, and uh, my son Elliot ended up passing away after four days. So he had a pulmonary embolism and. He didn't make it but Elizabeth was Elizabeth is a fighter and she was very strong and even though she had a brain bleed um, she still she was just fighting so um, well Elliot was the second baby who came out so he was bigger than Elizabeth he was one pound 14 ounces um, you know we thought for sure he was going to be the one who would survive if either of them did and uh, for some reason apparently there is a thing wimpy white boys and apparently he definitely was a wimpy white boy he they just don't want to breathe and you could just see it he he wasn't trying to live at that point and uh four day he had had a grade four bilateral brain bleed so they had told us that if he survived that it was you know odds of him being able to do anything or or you know walking even it were probably very slim and so he his quality of life was not going to be very good hence then you know they wanted us to make a decision whether we should put a dnr on him and but before we could even do that he ended up having a pulmonary embolism that night and passing away so maybe you know it may have been a blessing in disguise because poor baby would have probably had a really terrible life but you know it's horrible when you're so excited to be having these twins and then one of them is is taken away well they're both taken away early and then and then one of them you know passes away before you even get a chance to hold him so that was that was very tough i had not held either of them before he i, I didn't get to hold him until after he had passed away so We'll see. On the twelfth day that she was alive, she basically her body had started turning black and blue, and so the people, at, the doctors at Baptist were saying she was either head and neck, which is very serious, and she probably wasn't going to make it. We were going to need to do emergency surgery. They couldn't do it. We were going to have to go to Le Bonheur. So we got to Le Bonheur that afternoon, and they came in and told us, "Look, odds are we're going to cut her open." Her insides are gonna be necrotic. It's gonna be really quick. We'll sew her back up and that'll be it. And that's probably what's going to happen. And when that surgery took three hours, what was supposed to take 45 minutes, we were hoping, hopeful that maybe she was gonna be okay. And the doctor came back in and said, amazingly, that it was just a small perforation in her colon and that they fixed it and everything was gonna be fine. That was fine, nothing, you know, she was going to be all right and after that i think that was kind of our turning point there was still a long six months ahead of us here in the hospital and four more surgeries but that was kind of our major turning point where if she could get through this then she she's probably going to be all right <laughs> it was a very long day a long night before and finally when they realized that it was inevitable they were coming whether or not we wanted them to uh, we had to decide whether to do a c-section and take them both or try to just deliver Elizabeth because she was the one who was pushing out and try to see if Elliot could stay in there longer or just 
you know, those were the options that we had to decide. And of course you wanted your kids to stay in as long as possible. But at that point I, I had to decide what's better for everyone. And I think it was safer to go ahead and do the C-section. So we did and they got them out really quickly, which was great, but it was definitely a crazy emotional day. Day to day, we've got so many appointments. It's slowed down a little bit since she's now one, but we still, you know, with a pulmonologist, a neurosurgeon, a regular surgeon, eye doctor, uh, her regular doctor's appointments. I mean, it's constantly doctor's appointments or therapy appointments. We've got a physical therapist, occupational therapist, uh, developmental therapist, a speech therapist who we see weekly. And so, I mean, it's a lot of appointments, but you know, she's, we're trying to make it as normal as possible. and and she's doing great so we get up and we do her exercises and stretches and and everything for physical therapy that we do on our own and feed her and bathe her and then play and it's napping and trying to do that in between working is is difficult but i'm very grateful that i have my parents who my mom keeps her every day which is great because otherwise i wouldn't be able to keep my job and and be able to take care of her at the same time so Well, we are really excited. I've actually done the March of Dimes Signature Chefs event for the last few years, making cakes for them. So it was really exciting for us to be able to be the ambassador family. Um, you know, it's kind of come full circle. We've been doing this event for a while. And so to be able to be the family here is really exciting and, and neat. And I'm just glad that um, something good is gonna come out of our story. You know, we can tell other people and, and show them that even though it's a very long road and very tough that you can get through it. And I mean, she's living proof right here. The, uh, why is the March of Dimes so important? March of Dimes is important to us uh, for, for a lot of reasons. They do a lot of research into why these babies are born prematurely and what can be done to help them once they are. I know that they developed the, the RSV shot, which is very important to us for when, when she got out of the hospital in the winter, it, it helps protect her from getting any kind of colds and things. And uh, any kind of a cold would have put her back in the hospital, probably on a ventilator for months because her lungs were just so underdeveloped. Um, and, so it's just, you know, every, every little bit of research that they do to help prevent things like, you know, whatever happened to me and for other moms that go into premature labor and just to help develop different techniques and different things for these babies once they are out and they have, you know, sorry.